What's up team, it's Dr. Sill here. I'm in Sydney, Australia, and the COVID cases have popped. I'm in scrubs until further notice at hospital. I'm staying at home in lockdown. And what better thing to do in lockdown than to binge watch some YouTube, am I right? Today's request was to look at someone in, I think it's a depressive phase of bipolar. Most of bipolar affective disorder is spent in a depressive state. Most people think of bipolar as like mania and there is mania by definition. It's not like the majority of the time. Most of the time is just this awful grinding depression that people struggle through and then they go super high and then they go super low. So let's have a look at today's video where um, we can talk about some of the signs and symptoms of depression and depressive illnesses. I guess there's a quick mnemonic that you get taught in high school. So the S in Siggy Caps stands for sleep and yes, in depressive illness, you can have too much hypersomnia or too little insomnia. And I have a whole video on insomnia, which you can check out. But often with depressive illness, it's early morning awakening. So they wake up at three or 4 a.m. They just feel awful and they can't get back to sleep because of this um, dysphoric, terrible feeling. The I stands for interests, specifically a lack of interests. So one of the key important defining characteristic of a depressive episode is anhedonia. And by definition, it's a lack, it's, it's a loss of interest. So someone who used to do lots of exercise and maybe play um, basketball, you know, was interested in doing things. They, they've lost motivation. The pathway, the motivation pathway in the brain is acting differently in a depressive illness and they're no longer motivated to do things that used to interest them. The G stands for guilt, and this is just this awful sense of guilt that people get in depression. E stands for energy, and specifically low energy. The C stands for concentration, poor concentration, inability to focus on tasks. They watch a movie, they forgot what the plot was because they're not even focusing on the movie, that kind of thing. A is appetite, and that as well can be too high or too little. So eating too much or too little, like anorexia. The P stands for psychomotor activity and specifically it slows. So people move slower in depression. You just, you see them when they reach for a scratch or something. It's just, everything is slower. And the S of course in Siggy Caps is suicidality, which is something you always have to ask about with people who are ex experiencing a depressive illness because asking about suicide does not increase the risk of suicide and it's an important thing to do because you might be instrumental in helping someone relieve this inattention they've been experiencing and haven't been able to talk about and hopefully, hopefully helping prevent it. Okay, so those are some of the key signs and symptoms of a depressive illness. Let's watch the video. Can you tell me about the problems you've been having? I know they may be difficult to talk about, but how are you feeling right now? I still feel pretty depressed right now. So um, I first like to stop early because there's a lot of information you can gather. It's preliminary information, you're not sure about it, but you can just observe a lot pretty quickly because the picture's worth a thousand words. So straight off the bat, you can see her posture is stooped. She is not, emitting any sense of confidence. She's, it's this kind of withdrawn, stooped posture. It looks sad, okay? This is like, if you were a cartoonist, this is the caricature of sadness. By the way, for the record, these are all actors. So it, this is for educational purposes. It's a medical teaching film, there it is. So yeah, you can just already see that um, so far. Let's uh, hear what she has to say. How long have you been feeling this way? I don't know. I, I can't seem to think real clearly right now. Did the Issues feeling come on suddenly? Well, no. About four years ago, I went through a friendly divorce. Now my ex-husband wants to move back home and he believes that if he stops paying child support for our two children, that the bill collectors will hound me enough that I'll let him come back home. So now we've identified a life stressor. So this is a psychosocial stressor, a financial stressor, and an interpersonal stressor, the relationship with the ex-husband and the cost. Um, and this is enough to trigger a depressive episode. Sometimes depressive episodes don't have triggers, by the way, but here we have one. So Thursday, the bill collector started hounding. I'm 
being pressured into a marriage with another man that I don't particularly want. I just couldn't take all the pressures. My kids came in from school very upset and they cried all day. I just couldn't go any longer. So what happened then? About two o'clock Friday morning, I took an overdose of pills and they called an ambulance and they brought me here. Who called? I did, before I went under. So there was a bit of a discrepancy. She, she, she said, they called an ambulance and they brought me here. But then she's now corrected saying, I called an ambulance. So I'm not sure if that's a script issue. but. Nevertheless, what we're seeing here is an accumulation of stress leading to a sense of helplessness uh, and I'm getting helpless themes from her, like I can't go on, and that has resulted in her having a suicide attempt, which fortunately didn't result in suicide because she was brought straight to the, uh, uh, to the hospital. And just so you know, if someone does have uh, an overdose of medications, what we often do is give them activated charcoal. Depends what the medicine is, but there's usually, there's sometimes some antidotes. So if someone has a paracetamol um, overdose, you can give them something called N-acetylcysteine, which is an antidote for the toxic effects of Panadol. And activated charcoal is basically this thing that binds out lots of toxic chemicals. It makes you feel terrible, but it's better than the medicine, well, the, the, the toxic agent that you've ingested. What happened then? I was put in intensive care. I was in there from Friday morning until about 10 o'clock Saturday. When you took the pills, were you sure you wanted to die? Yes, I wanted to die. And That quick response really suggests an urgency and, and a certainty uh, because a lot of people might reactively attempt suicide but actually regret it later. You know, once they take the pills, then they regret it. They realize the lethality of their actions and try and, and stop it. But she, she wanted to die and that's, um, that's dreadful. You took a number of different kinds of pills. Yes, um, they were all prescribed. I had, um, had, I had high blood pressure, so I had my blood pressure pills and I had some antidepressants left over and I had before they put me in the hospital and put me on an antidepressant, they tried me on all kinds of tranquilizers, or pain pill, or whatever you want to call it, so I had all those. How long were you unconscious? It was late Friday night before I really knew very much. One of the things we do in our assessments in mental health is look at the affect of people's faces and Although her body posture is quite stooped, she has quite a reactive affect, which is the facial expressions she's emitting. So while she's talking, she's using her eyebrows a lot. Um, it's not a flat affect that you would maybe see in a melancholic depression. So that could be because she's an actor, um, or it could just be her, uh, her situation. But it's, it's an interesting um, observation, because often when people are in a depressive illness, they don't have this kind of activity in their face. There's this flatness to how they speak, this monotonous speech. And she's got a bit of spontaneity of speech and fluctuations in how she's speaking and that kind of thing. But she's doing an excellent job as an actor. How would you describe your mood over the last week or so? Just tired. I was really having to push myself to keep going. I went to class Thursday night and I was just so tired I just couldn't go any longer. A common myth is that for something to be a depressive illness that you have to feel depressed or the correct the other term is dysphoric. You can have depression without dysphoria. You can have depression that is purely a kind of anhedonic depression, like uh, an, an issue with motivation. So she's describing just a sense of fatigue and lack of motivation. Physically tired or tired of being depressed? Physically. I was physically tired. And then I just, you know, everything built up and I was sitting there trying to relax. I don't know. Uh, I cried most of the day Thursday. 
this feeling that you had, was it the same as if someone close to you had died? It was sort of like someone had died. I felt deserted, and I See the felt expressions? completely drained. Except, well, I just couldn't get out of it. I couldn't think optimistic thoughts or pleasant thoughts. I just couldn't. How do you feel about yourself? Do you feel positively? No, I don't. How do you feel about yourself in comparison to others? It's not be because I don't try at times for some things. And then I put things off, too. Lately, I haven't been able to get any of my classwork done. It just seems like I haven't been able to. That bothers me a lot. How do you see the future? This is just adding to our stresses. I don't see a future. I, I just figure if it all ends, my mother will take care of the kids and that'll be it. So it's a really important question asking about if someone's thinking about the future. We use the term future focused or not future focused. She isn't thinking, she, like she's obviously at a high risk of suicide and, and a second attempt of suicide if that's the way she's thinking. This is a red flag. So if you were seeing someone in the community who was um, s saying things like this, you would probably suggest for them to go to hospital while they um, optimize the medicines and the psychosocial status with the help of social worker and other allied health professionals to stabilize uh, the situation. Do you feel like a failure? How often do you feel that way? Is it a feeling that's with you all the time? It seems like when something bad happens, I always blame myself. Think back over the last couple of weeks before you came to the hospital. Has your appetite been good? Not really. Uh, some days I'll eat, some days I don't. Sometimes I'll go two or three days without eating. Have you been hungry? Usually not. It's just the day, um, the days I work, um, I don't cook. Uh, the kids eat at school, so when I get home, so we've, we've, we've talked about eating uh, issues at the start of the uh, video when I was explaining the symptoms and it looks like her response is an anorexic response like and I don't use anorexic as a, in the term anorexic disorder but like a, a anorexia we use as a term of someone not wanting to eat so she's not wanting to eat or getting the motivation or the sense of hunger to eat it sounds like. Um, the big red flag here is that she has kids that she cares for and she's just kind of suggested that she's not feeding them. Um, so that's quite a dangerous situation and can negatively affect the kids and can negatively affect her later. This is quite a, a, another red flag. I'm normally so tired I go right to bed so I don't eat. Have, I, you, been, have you been having any trouble sleeping? I think as the psychiatrist speaking with her, you have a duty of care to know if the kids are well looked after and you have to ask a full set of questions about how the kids are going right now to know whether you need extra supports urgently. But anyway, it's a teaching film. It's, it's a, there's no kids. At home I wasn't. I did last night. How much do you usually sleep? Seven or eight hours. And how much have you been sleeping during the past week? Might have been about nine or ten hours. Have you had any trouble so concentrating? She's sleeping too much, but eating too little. I just can't seem to think real clearly. Issues with uh, concentration. Real straight right now. All right, that's the video. So, very interesting demonstration of the uh, signs and symptoms of depressive illness. There was no symptoms of mania in this video, obviously. It was, a, it was a depressive episode that was being shown. And it did a really good job of showing some of those um, key things we talked about at the start of the video. So, if you ever meet anyone or have a friend that seems to be having these symptoms, you have to perform good mental health first aid. By the way, I'm making a course on mental health first aid, so check um, the descriptions below because the course might be released by the time this video comes out. 
but that means you have to ask them you have to and asking means you ask them about how they're feeling and also if they're having thoughts of suicide if you think that's a risk factor and then you have to support them which means you help them get to a doctor or a mental health professional so that you can take the appropriate next steps all right okay guys thanks so much for watching that is it for this video i wish you all an absolutely lovely day remember this is not diagnosing this is not medical advice this is just some junior doctor watching some um <laughs> you know some videos to react to so don't take it too seriously but if you enjoyed it please consider leaving the video a like and subscribing to the channel you can also sign up to my patreon and the first 25 people on patreon will get a meet and greet call with me uh, which is always a lot of fun so you can consider that all right see you all in the next video Thank <laughs> you.